Hello. Oh, it's been a few days I've been tending to myself and like just going through some stuff and needing to process that without intentionally commenting on collective energies. Um, I know a lot of the stuff that I'm feeling and thinking on is in the collective energies, but then some of it's not. So just been taking the time that I need. Um, that being said, I've been like highly emotional. So if I end up crying for whatever reason, then I've warned you, you know, just during the reading. Um, I cry very easily and I cry for tons of reasons. I cry when I'm overwhelmed, exhausted, sad, happy. Um, sometimes if I have to pee badly enough, I'll cry a little bit. So anyway, it's um, not inconceivable, but I won't make it awkward if you don't. And yeah, so we have a new moon today. It's the new moon in Leo. Um, it's feeling a lot like a full moon. Why do I say that? Because it's got this um, sleepy yet alert, discombobulated, ungrounded sense uh, in, the, in the collective. Um, so for me today, I had to go be in a forest setting, <laughs> like as, as, as soon as I possibly could to just kind of regulate my nervous system and talk to the trees and um, ground. But another thing I wanted to talk about was essential oils and how important, how incredibly important essential oils are for grounding and how just even a smell can change your internal state. Um, so grounding oils, like what would be good examples of those? Anything like earthy, in my opinion. So that ties into like cedar wood, pine needle, um, cinnamon, but be very careful with it because even as an essential oil, it can, uh, like I have reactions to it. I have a tiny vial of it right here, but um, cinnamon oil, it's very potent. And in fact, with any essential oil, you're supposed to kind of use a carrier oil, like jojoba oil or like a body oil, you know, if you're gonna like rub it into yourself. I don't do that because I like to absolutely reek. <laughs> it disturbs people, my mother tells me not to do it. But, um, Valor oil, that's a blend. That's a, that's a blend you can get um, and that has frankincense in it and some other things, V-A-L-O-R is a really good one. Four times like this, also just frankincense, sandalwood, um, ylang ylang oh this is tea tree tea tree and lemon and lime oil peppermint those are going to be more stimulating they're going to help with your mental clarity and your focus um my inclination during energies like this is to counter the already like dialed up like mental activity so that's why i prefer something that's a little more grounding uh this one's called mindfulness and it's a blend of cinnamon cardamom and cedar this one would be perfect Perfect for a time like this, in fact. Let me... Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. That is nice. Please just don't underestimate how powerful the essential oils, uh, you know, are for helping to ground the energy. They really do. They really do a lot. Um, however, there are certain ones in the family that I named, like pine needle oil, uh, that are unsafe for dogs. So just make sure if you do have a dog and you're using oils that you know which ones are you know safe for them or not because if i slather myself with pine needle oil which i do sometimes um but then i go curl up to my dog it can actually irritate you know it can it can cause damage to their perfect little systems so just be aware of that uh the internet's a pretty good resource for what essential oils are not not good with dogs um so yeah the new moon is feeling a little bit like like a full moon just in terms of how overwhelming it is um and because of that, I'm feeling into this need to ground to ground right now. Um, and again, like I said, that for me comes from just like tying my energy into something natural that's bigger than me, like a tree. Uh, and what else for today? Um, we're at this beautiful midpoint in August. And as I've said for a few weeks, August is a pretty pivotal month for the year 2023. Uh, with the Lion's Gate on the 8th of August. And then as we move into the fall months, we have 9-9, 10-10, 11-11, 12-12. All of these dates, the sequencing, um, you know, people consider it like a little portal season where things can happen really quickly and in kind of an accelerated nature. And that still applies and affects people who aren't necessarily 
keyed into those things and trying to maximize them for manifestation purposes. It just, you know, plays out in their lives in a, in a different way. Did it? The different way. So um, as we find ourselves in the middle of this month, and as you're probably well aware, we, we started the month with a, with a full moon and we're ending the month with a full moon. So we're right here in the middle of this new moon. Um, it is a good day, today, tomorrow, yesterday, it is a good time to focus on what we would like to bring into our lives. And my sense is that we're being a little bit overwhelmed with what's still leaving our lives or what we would would not like to see more of or what we're still changing. I feel like we're a little bit still kind of like oscillating within the vibration of those things. And so you can kind of combine your little time in nature with a little time of this is what I did because there's only so many minutes in the day <laughs> and I haven't, you know, I haven't even had time or like the, the personal energy and space mentally um, to even record my readings and these matter to me. So you can, you can double up activities and spend some time outside, even just like looking at the clouds or the sky or the stars or, you know, connecting with the trees or I don't know what it is, sitting on the ground to also focus on what you do want. If you already have been focusing on that, then that is great. And um, keep doing it, especially today. Um, so just... It's like all the stuff that's leaving, like we can't always disconnect from things as readily as we would like to. Sometimes they linger. It could be like, I'm just thinking of somebody moving out. That doesn't happen overnight. I mean, maybe it would sometimes, but then of course there's the hair dryer they forgot or what, you know, what, whatever it is, these little kind of trickle energetic pulls that kind of continue to stay around as they move out. Um, I'm seeing it as this time for us to let those start to run on autopilot. And when you need to respond to something that is like a, a to do, you're required to answer to somebody or do something. It's a necessity and you, you must do it. Like not, not be inauthentic or not engaged with that, but almost like your energy to partake in that event or that thing that's part of whatever else you're letting go of. And I'm not saying the parties involved have to be, you know, aware of your position in it, basically, or like, I'm cutting you off, you know, not like that, more so like your energy of your involvement within that dynamic is like packaged and sealed so that you're protected. So for example, if I do have to, I don't know, um, if, if it was the moving out example and somebody was moving out of my place, and they had to come back and kind of have another round of loading up a car and, and moving, I would do that in, in a really um, directed way where I'm not, you know, engaging and talking more than I need to. I would have my black tourmaline and my selenite on, on me in my left and right pockets respectively, which I always do because this is a grounding stone, black tourmaline. Also, look how cute my nails are. They're so unusual. They have like these 3D golden bars. I really like them. I like doing unusual things with my nails. And then they make me feel like I know what I'm talking about. But anyway, selenite is kind of more of a, you know, universally clearing crystal form of gypsum, high vibrational, and then a low vibrational black tourmaline just to kind of keep grounded. Um, you could have your crystals on you. You could do some, ki some kind of meditation or affirmation around like, I only give what is necessary to give in this situation and no more. I shield my energy from being taken advantage of. You just kind of seal off of these things. You seal off from these things when you engage with them so that you know as you uh, wrap up whatever it is that you need to wrap up in the next two weeks, you're already looking forward. You're already looking ahead. And if you haven't had the space and time or like mental, emotional space and time within yourself to set intentions for the next, the next two weeks, but more importantly, the rest of 2023 and what the next, you know, five months within that are going to do for you, then that's what you need to be focusing on um, just in order to make this energetic pivot. I think that if we can start looking around at the things that we're very, very grateful for, like the little budding seeds that are starting to break through the surface, that show evidence of a changed life or a changed way of doing things or a new chapter, we need to 
like, you know, like a, like a parent on Facebook, take photos, send it. I'm talking about like metaphorically, just give it the devotion and the attention that a proud parent who posts their kid all over Facebook would, because that's, you know, that's where our investment lies energetically in the new energy and the new ideas. Um, it may not look like much yet. It may not feel like much, but it's worthy of your faith, whatever it is that you're trying to start. And I think I said this two readings ago. Again, I know I haven't posted something in probably about a week now, but I was saying like the process of the new chapter is threefold and that it involves releasing, keeping, and bringing in. Right now, I'm seeing us as kind of the, the releasing. Partition yourself from that. Focus on the, this is what I want to keep in my life. This is what I want to amplify. And this is what I want to bring in. So yeah, it is kind of, it is kind of still threefold. It's that we're replacing the stuff that we want to release with stuff that we want to amplify that already exists in our minds and hearts and physical realities. Uh, so to recap, <laughs> spend some time outside if you're able to, just to ground your energy today. And even if it's only for five minutes, and if that's all the time you have to make any notice whatsoever in your conscious mind that today is a, a new moon in Leo and something is, you know, afoot and we're kind of transitioning again through these, you know, lunar cycles and whatnot, just make, you know, a point of saying like, I'm so grateful for, oh, I don't know, my dog, my health, my eyesight, my able-bodiedness, um, grateful for whatever, whatever it is that you have coming up that you're excited about, grateful for your ability to do this and that. Um, if you heard a really good, a really good song, a really funny joke, grateful for that, grateful for it's whatever it is that no 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 one thing is too silly or too small um and then also you know what are you excited for and you can focus on this in terms of what you're bringing into your life even if there's no evidence to you know suggest or show that it's manifesting for you yet you can express gratitude for that and then just like affirm it to nature i love being witnessed and held by nature and i love spewing my secrets to nature you know you don't have to be alone with all of the overwhelm in life um i have been feeling particularly overwhelmed which again is why i haven't been posting but every time i go into the woods and i like unload that if it's talking out out loud or like literally hugging onto a tree or just a palm to a trunk if the tree's too big sometimes i'll just touch it or if the tree's too small I like to find kind of like reasonably big, probably 70 to 100 year old trees that, that fit in my wingspan, I, like, like a bonafide tree hugger. Um, and that's not just like, oh, it's cute, hug the tree. No, it's because the heart chakra, the arms, the hands, and I want all, all of the stuff that I'm carrying, all of the, you know, the anxiety and, and the burdens, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is, even if it's stuff that I've, you know, come into and started carrying for somebody else, you know, whatever it is, my energy or not, my my grief and my confusion or that of other people that I'm trying to transmute out. I hold on to the tree and I imagine it going into the earth and that is how I release it. So it's not just some cute like, oh, she's hugging a tree. Um, don't be ashamed. I've been caught touching the trees and hugging the trees before and life goes on. People will... People will let you do it. They'll walk right on by. But I mean, ideally you can do it where you don't feel self-conscious about anybody seeing you doing it. But anyway. Um, and again with the oils. Okay, all right. 14 minute long intro rambling about, about trees and oils and grounding. But also intentions. Yeah, that was the last thing. Intentions. And with that... I'm also just getting this need to not force anything in the collective energies um, because of this kind of like tiredness, but also like wired alertness that I'm getting on this day with this new moon. Excuse me. Um, don't force yourself into doing anything that you're not compelled to do energetically. Um, drink a lot of water, make sure you get rest. 
And if you kind of have this inclination to go, you know, do something or check on something or call somebody, listen to that. Go with your gut instinct. Um, and I think that it's okay right now. My intuitive guidance is telling me that it's okay to make subtle deviations from the, the way that things were planned in order to honor what it is that needs attention on a day like this. And that would apply for the next, for the next three days is what I'm getting until um, the 19th of August. Okay. <clears throat> but this is a timeless reading. So do what you will. Do what you will with that information. I'm going to pull four cards from the Psychic Tarot by John Holland. <laughs> and then I'm going to clarify with my tarot. So we've got disruption here. Victory and success. Yeah, this is the Tower card in the Major Arcana. Came out a few weeks ago. But we also have victory and success, which is number six. We've got transformation, number 13. What is this in the Major Arcana? I'll have to remember. Transformation. And my fourth is movement, choices, and decisions. Yeah, movement, choices, and decisions. This is a card of free will. This is a card of things changing rapidly outside of our control, which we should be getting pretty sick of or used to at this point. Eh, they don't all quite have enough room to be there, but we're gonna ride with it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm interested in first addressing this one, transformation. Ah, I should have known, number 13. It's the death card, okay? <clears throat> so this says, a time of endings is close at hand. Don't resist the abrupt changes that are suddenly happening in your life. These could be taking place in your personal life, relationships, business, or career. You have the strength as the transformation card asks you to have courage and to know that renewal follows every conclusion. This card comes forth to remind you that the death of an old way of thinking and believing must occur before you can move forward on your new path. Transformation is all about the ebb and flow of, of life cycles. Nothing in this life remains motionless. Everything is on its way to somewhere. Accept the changes and opportunity will come to expand you in more ways than you could have ever imagined. You can't live in the past. It's time to move on. In order to take the next positive steps, you should look closely at your own life and ask yourself, are there loose ends that need to be tied up? Are there people in my life whom I need to express myself to? What needs to be completed so I can have a fresh start? When you do so, you'll have a stronger, more reinforced foundation to carry you through the new beginnings that await you. So what I'm getting is that like, ideally we've done what we, what we need to do in terms of those loose ends or making amends this is really kind of like this last chance. Um, and I think if we fail to do that, there will be some energetic clog potentially within us still having not kind of resolved whatever it is the card may be speaking to that prevents new things and new energy from coming in, or it will result, you know, there's, infinite options as to how this can play out but I'm just doing two scenarios if we haven't done that tying up if we're not conscious of what it is that we're leaving behind you know in order to consciously know oh I need to tie up my loose ends you know it could create a clog or it could result in some kind of subsequent mini or medium or, or big tower moment again um so now I'm going to read about this card it says, a sudden, usually unforeseen disruption or major change is happening or is about to take place. Even if it appears to be a negative experience, it can lead to enlightenment or a total shift in your lifestyle. In traditional tarot meanings, this card represents the falling tower that eventually crumbles due to its weak foundation. Whichever part of your life that you focus on, this is an opportunity to rebuild with a solid, positive structure to make you or the situation even stronger. There are times when the most difficult situations arise in your life. If you choose to, they can act as a catalyst to heal other areas. They're beneficial because they're truly your greatest teachers. Learn from past mistakes, accept them, and integrate them into your life as stepping stones. 
To be forewarned is to be forearmed. This disruption card is a reminder that negative thinking, limiting beliefs, ignoring problematic situations, and risky or careless lifestyles must be addressed so that positive changes can take place. Life has a habit of moving you forward whether you're ready or not. Transformation of mind, body, and soul can happen if you view this dramatic time of change as an opportunity for growth. Yeah. Forward. Um, I don't really think that's any new information because I have pulled the tower quite a lot. Quite a lot recently. I'm just trying to total up these numbers. That would be... Um... 4 plus 6, 10. Yeah, all of these reduce down to the single, single digit of 1, but the sum is 10. And 10 is the total, you know? It's the completion of the cycle. I think that's why I'm getting that this new moon has full moon energy, because it's almost like, it's almost saying like, not, I don't want to use the word warning because it's very loaded, but it's almost like this new moon is a warning of like, hey, August is almost halfway done. How have you been doing? You know, how has your free will been getting in the way of or supporting your goals? There is, and you see how it's almost eclipsed. Like I did that on accident, but like there is a trumpeteer here giving victory and recognition and success to the things that we want to call in, you know? It's almost like he's trumpeting out a call that will be re re um, seeing bats and echolocation and how those sound waves, it's actually really cool the way that bats use their echolocation. And I believe that dolphins do this too. But when you think about those sound waves spiraling out, those wrap around the physical objects, like the walls of the cave, they can map out in the darkness, you know, what the physical world looks like because of the way that there's a, a bounce back of those sound waves, you know, wrapping themselves around the physical world the bat can map out and understand so it's like we're shooting out our waves of optimism and hope and like new ideas for new projects or relationships or chapters in our lives and those don't just exist you know if I go out into nature and scream into the woods about my greatest dreams and desires it's not just dissipating into the trees, never to be heard, you know, from again, those ideas and, and thoughts. And you don't have to, you don't have to verbalize it. You could write it down. You could have it in your heart. You could vision board it. I mean, don't just keep it in your heart. I would say, get it out of your body in some way, you know, make real to you, if no one else, what it is that you want and you're trying to do. But my point is when you put it out there in whatever form, it doesn't just go away. Those things that you put out, like this trumpeteer, they... They, they wrap themselves around the universe and then, you know, communicate back to you and what you live and experience is your evidence as to like, you know, how, how it's unfolding for you. And again, with the detachment from how things are manifesting, I'm not saying like when you get feedback in the form of continued experience, and that feedback doesn't mirror the changed experience that you're trying to live in or walk towards don't give up hope it's just meaning like that the changes that are happening are in service you your your faith around your manifestation process ensures that you won't be tripped up by whatever comes to you does that make sense let me try again so you send those things out your vibration literally but you know like like echolocation those dreams and desires even if they're not heard by the people and the things that they are encountering in the real world, you carrying that tone, if we're looking at the trumpeter, trumpeteer, whatever you start to experience as a response to you kind of carrying that and emanating that vibration is the path of you moving to that end goal because you have to assume, it's like ordering at the restaurant again, you have to assume that your request has been heard, that it's being delivered to you, um, and that whatever's changing is in service of it being delivered to you. For example, let me come up with something like very, very, very 
easy, like, like really like obvious, like a swimming pool. Like it, so if you were really interested um, in being able to hold your breath, you know, underwater, but you were afraid of like actually swimming is it's not, I don't, I don't like it as an example, but we're going to run with it. Okay. You, you would eventually realize, you would eventually realize that in order to start even, you know, being able to work on your goal, like uh, now I'm seeing all these loopholes. Yeah. I guess you could just dunk your face in a basin and hold your breath to work on your lung capacity and your ability to hold your breath. But you get my point. You would eventually realize like that the, that the people in your life that are breath holding coaches, you know, they, they would try to guide you into the pool and you would eventually realize that getting in the pool is part of you having that goal, even though you never thought about the pool. You just thought about your ability to increase the amount of time that you can hold your breath for. So there may be certain things that we don't want to let go of or welcome in that might be part of us having what we want. And I mean, I nobody can tell you if if that is you know true and in what ways for for you and what you're working on except for your intuition um your common sense obviously too i don't think not all of these things are like shrouded in mystery like the pool one some of them are pretty obvious but hmm. i just want to reiterate that it's important that you just kind of assume you just kind of assume that what you want, granted it's not an ego, ego-based desire around like I want a bazillion dollars so I can have a five car garage because that's not, you know, the type of manifestation. Not, not that you can't want that, right? But it's about having, you know, I saw a quote the other day that I really liked. It was something along the lines of like, your best connection, you're most connected to the quantum quantum reality of life when your prayers for yourselves start to echo your prayers for reality so when what you want for yourself is also kind of of benefit to um to the collective i don't want to go too much off on to talking about <laughs> Whether or not what people want is worthy of being manifested because I'm not the authority on that. But what I will say is that when I was younger, I desperately wanted to manifest certain things. Some of them remain intact. And I've come very far on the journey of manifesting those things. They're just a, they're just a slow burn. They take a long time. Um, and I've had to change a lot of things in order to welcome them. But some of the things that I wanted to manifest, I don't want them now. You know what I mean? I I wouldn't have I, I wouldn't have liked it if that's the direction my life went. So maybe we're caught up in our own um, like illusions around what we're trying to bring into our life. But at this point in this cycle, I don't think so as much. I think that's kind of actually what we're getting rid of is the stuff that we thought we wanted from six, seven, eight years ago that did come into our lives and now we're like this has not has not gone the way that I that I thought it would but I'm just like I feel like I'm extrapolating way more than I have the information to do to do so right now so I'm going to read about this this card here number two movement choices and decisions this card indicates a time of movement significant changes and choices must be made with hard work, great effort, and determination, you have the ability to juggle all of the demands that are in front of you. Whether they concern money, business decisions, or other projects, it's important to stay flexible and focused. You don't have to do it alone. Reach out for the best advice and assistance. In addition, a financial union or partnership may present itself to you. The more time you take to make these vital decisions and choices, the longer it will be before you can move towards your goals in the physical world. The changes that are emerging aren't some random acts or coincidences. They're all part of a positive, larger scheme. Notice the connections with everything, and this will enable you to avoid future problems and conflicts. Yeah, um, I believe that. And I just spoke to that. Like, I think that a lot of the things that we're being faced with, it doesn't look like a, you know, perfect correlation for the larger goal, for the larger victory. But it's it's part of what we must move through 
with faith that it's in service of, you know, it's part of this transformation. It's part of this transformation. Um, also, just be incredibly watchful right now of the way that you use your free will. What's at the bottom of the deck? Fulfillment of wishes. This is gorgeous. I really like this. I'm not going to read for this card, but I will say I've never, ever seen it before. I've never seen it before. It's so pretty. I like it. I like it. And I got a vision for an art piece earlier today uh, that had a little, um, almost like a genie's lamp. Have you ever seen those white um, kind of antique little creamer boats? Or like for syrup in the morning, um, just, just like a white ceramic creamer pourer, itty bitty pitcher. I think there's a word that I'm forgetting, like a really available word. No, that's not coming to me. Anyway, the painting was this beautiful little creamer pourer, miniature pitcher. What's that your idea that I can't think of it? Sitting on a cloud. And it was pouring out this um, like iridescent liquid. And the further down the painting, it got like really encrusted with like, with like sequins and glitter. It just became like substance. Um, and I like... I don't know, it reminded me of this. I think because of the waterfall, just the glow coming out of this, this trunk, little chest, not trunk, little treasure chest. Um, yeah, just so something about the flow, right? To be around a waterfall, it like evokes this kind of misty, environment where you might be able to like feel like made of the mist at Niagara Falls. Wow, that was interesting. I don't know if that caught on camera, but I put the deck down and the tiny candle next to it went out. Um, I'm going to clarify all these cards with my other deck now. Move right into that. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I'm getting is that it's saying like, basically with that movement, decisions, choices, it's, it's giving this energy of like, you have to decide, you have to move forward, you have to do it, you have to, you have to, you have to, it's like this compulsory, and for me, at least, and how I'm seeing it manifesting in the collective energies is, is like, hold on, you don't have to. I mean, you do, but the attitude that we approach the, the musts in life defines them. Like if we always drag our feet in a begrudging way and we bring this, and I'm guilty of this too, you know, sometimes like if we bring this like, ugh, I don't want to have to. Well, you know what? Everybody has to do things sometimes. And I'm not saying that absolutely everything that we have to do right now is in service of our bigger goals, but it could be, you know? And, and what if it is? And what if it is in a way that you don't expect? And and how can you honor how you feel right now if you're not feeling like moving forward, making decisions and choices? You know, what really is necessary of you on this day in particular, and I know I'm going to be posting this when the day is mostly through, but hopefully it still lends itself to to be useful advice in this in this week that we're in. Um, Mm. I'm hearing the song Sixes to Nines by Big Wild. I'm not going to sing it. I'm not going to sing today because my voice is feeling scratchy. But uh, I mean, it's something of a love song. A lot of the songs I get are in nature, but I'm, it's, it's the, <laughs> I'm getting it as like a, a transmutation of energy song. You turn my sixes to nines. Uh, which also has the energy of like turn that frown upside down. So basically, um, 
you know, we have a lot of things in our lives that are mundane or like just kind of downright depressing to engage with, like getting gas or <laughs> who knows, you know, there is an element in an air of magic in encrusting, encapsulating and surrounding absolutely every single thing in every single person's life. It's just up to you to kind of engage with the magical potential of the mundane activities or the things you must do um, and kind of see your ability to have a different attitude within all of it because it's very available to to all of us that's a good song reframing reframing things mentally reframing the way that we see things Yeah. All right, 35 minutes. So I'm gonna keep these by, but I'm gonna put them over here. Yeah, and what I was gonna say before, I don't know if I fully got this thought out, but 10, like the way that these numbers reduce down to a single digit, 10 is the completion. 10 is like the, I mean, I see this new moon as far as what I've been talking about for months now with like the birth canal and the water breaking and just the birth analogy in general. I see 10, like the, the baby's been born. We're the, we're the baby. The new phase is the baby. The new way is the baby. And it still requires like refinement and walking in and doing because when it's, uh, you know, when the baby's born, you don't have any scrapbooks yet. The baby's got to bounce around and do some things so that you can capture it and document it. It's got to produce a lock of hair for the scrapbook. That's what we're going through now with our new chapter, you know, letting it start to grow and mature so that we can take stock of it. There's nothing there to document yet, even in our own minds and hearts. But again, with the victory and the success, um, just be, I would say like very complimentary with all of the small wins to yourself right now. Like, even if it's like, heck yeah, I remembered to have an extra glass of water before I went to bed. Go me. Doesn't have to be bigger than that. Um, before I get these cards too, I just wanna say something. I still am very keen on working on my, my Barbie Oppenheimer in-depth <laughs> critique i'll get to it when i get to it but um with the whole alien thing and oh gosh all this stuff about human trafficking and and about alien thing i mean the disclosure that we were offered from the u.s government by the way by the way I could probably find these if I wanted to. The Australian government came out, I want to say in 2018, and said, we absolutely disagree with the way the American government is handling this. They have tons of evidence. They have tons of information. They're hiding all of it. <laughs> they don't think their people can handle any of it, blah, blah, blah. Um, what I'm trying to say is that I think that what's happening right now, especially even on YouTube with like people who use cards and people who have psychic gifts or people who are only Christian or only Buddhist or whatever, everybody's way too invested in figuring out who is evil and how evil are they. And that is still a conversation in and around the evilness of it all. And I don't like it, you know, and I'm not trying to be a, a spiritual bypasser and not look at it. I look at it, I think about it, and I talk about it. And I, and I share my thoughts about it with people who are, um, you know, close to me. And I urge you to do the same, but don't get wrapped up in whose fault it is. Who's, who's the baddest person of them all? The baddest party, the worst, like, I mean, that's always been the bit. Like, that's always been the game. That's always been the thing in the world to kind of corral people's like opinions on stuff. And it's, it's never, there's, there's, it's, 
it is what it is, but it is not a good time to do that. It is not a good time to do that. And even with like the stuff about the aliens coming out and everyone's just like, oh, it's because they're going to launch their Project Blue Beam and do the hollow, you know, the satellites in the sky with these projections, which we've obviously been presented with a lot of information around how viable it is. Like if you see in Dubai, these like huge things coming into a square and it's completely projected. Um, yeah, totally. I mean, I maintain that whatever we're allowed to see, whatever the public, the masses see as being technologically achievable and attainable and de dem demonstrable, dem demonstrable and doable, whatever they show us, the actual capacity is light years already up ahead of it. And whatever we're shown has been possible long before we're, you know, that's, that's obvious because everything has to be, you know, released or, or monetized or ma made available in these little spoon, spoon fed amounts. But I just think that there's a lot of distraction floating around right now and no part of your new chapter needs to weigh the heavy issues of the world in it, you know, unless you run some type of high level charity or something, I don't know. But my personal approach to this time period is just to go within, to focus on me, to feed all my energy into the things that I do wanna talk about, that I do wanna focus on. Um, and let that be enough for right now, because the whole, like maybe, maybe for, maybe, maybe I won't be recording videos around exactly what I think about all of that for a little while so that I can detach from it and make sure that I'm not feeding into the like, well, who, you know, the right and the wrong of it all. Cause honestly, it's just a bunch of people saying a bunch of stuff and just world's always going to be crazy. It really is. So again, like a reframing device. Yeah. All right. Well, first, okay, that's the seven of wands. I need to kind of push through and persevere, but let me, I'm going to take this as current energy, but also an exhaustion around doing so. Yeah, we do have, we do have movement underway. We have choices to make. We have things that need our attention. I just keep getting that. And I get that we don't really want to do those things. <laughs> and so we might feel like we're batting them away, but just, just, encode your contribution you can even do this when you wake up in the morning say like you know i just please bless all my actions words and thoughts with um a beneficial energy to those who receive them something as simple as that so that you know even if you feel inundated like i'm just thinking like this the last person that talks to this man at the end of the day they might get snapped at a little bit because he's at capacity and we don't want ourselves to get that way or feel like that but we obviously have obligations in our lives that we have to attend to right now so let me get um something else for current energy along with that seven of wands. Just I, maybe maybe people don't need to be reminded of this, but the internet is is a foolish wasteland. <laughs> it's a toxic dump. I'm so sorry because there are so many beautiful creators and people who are so gifted and amazing, and they're sharing their stuff on the internet, but that's not what goes viral. That's not what people talk about. And I'd really like it if it were. Here we have the Page of Pentacles. Contemplating our new beginning. A thoughtfulness around that. What else is here? Two. Ah, the Star card and the Two of Pentacles. Yeah, here you go. These two cards are the same in two different decks. And it is the card of free will. So I don't know if I got this thought out um, or if I interrupted myself like I usually do. But I, I see us as needing to check in with our free will right now and be like, do I really, do I agree with myself? Do I agree? Am I going on autopilot or not? And if I'm not, do I agree with the things that I'm making? The, the, I mean, the, the choices that I'm making. Do I agree with the choices that I'm making? The little choices the grander choices, um, perhaps, I'm kind of starting to infer a little bit. Perhaps some of the things that we have felt trapped within for the past little while as we are in this cycle and we're starting to let go and release of some things and freeing up some of this energy, 
Perhaps we're not used to having so much space to create newness. Like I'm seeing a 25 year marriage coming to an end and being like, what, what do I do now? You know, a person who's getting out of that type of you, you categorize your life by something like that. When we think about like, uh, say I were to meet somebody like, who, who are you? What are you all about? I would probably show him a picture of my dog, <laughs> so maybe some paintings, um, you know, wh where I grew up, where I live now, what's important to me. Like if you're in something that's that major, a 25 year marriage, there's a lot of empty space or something when it, when it comes to an end or it doesn't feel like empty space it feels like being trapped without something that used to give your life structure but in either case there's a there's a new potential to order the energy there's a new potential and and it's almost <laughs> i don't want to say overwhelming because that's also a loaded word it's exciting it's exciting, but it requires that we do something with it. So again, with like this obligatory energy that I'm picking up on, it's asking us to rise to the occasion of making the choices, just checking in with the free will to be like, D yeah, then, then yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be this big, like, am I a good person? Like, no, I think that we've cleared out a lot of stuff that didn't resonate with us that might've compromised our inherent good personness. You know, hopefully you've started to align a little bit more with not needing to push things forward with such, you know, great effort. And it can be this kind of exciting, um, like the doorways, right? Exciting thresholds to cross through, but not needing to be debilitated by the pressure of that. Because again, with, with two, with free will, excuse me, it's broken in two broken into bite-sized chunks this big transition it's of our own making and I'm hearing somebody be like I didn't you know what whatever has changed maybe you didn't want it to well guess what the universe sees you for who you are and you're meant for more or you're meant for greater there's something or someone or some place where you're going to find more victory, success, and fulfillment than you have ever found in those other places or with those other people or at that other thing. So even if there has been reluctance, which I don't think that there is, I think that we're very much ready and we've been ready to close out these chapters, but maybe we didn't know, you know, how or what, whatever it is. It's being like segmented up into this, into this thing that's, palatable for a human because we can only handle so much each and every day and so that kind of brings me back to this whole thing around like these decisions like don't try not to take this attitude of like oh have to do this have to do that try to see the magic see all those little have to do this have to do that see them as these magnificent arches you know these magnificent doorways that you can apply this kind of this wonder to like i get to do this even if it's something really trivial um because that keeps it light. And it's important to keep it light right now. What else we have with that for current energy? And I'd like you just to observe the parallels and the postures here. They're kind of mimicking one another. They're like, you know, bent over considering something. Her, the wish that she's made. And don't forget, look. Oh, well, it's gone now. But there was, well, it's gone now. But the card was wish fulfillment, right? So we're still, what I love about this and how they mirror each other is that we're still focused on the wish. We're thinking about it. We're pondering it. But the wish fulfillment, it showed itself earlier. It's almost like, and now I'm getting brought back to the painting vision that I had again, where the milk creamer is pouring out. It's like those ideas. And I told you they become, oh, and I'm getting um, Rumpelstiltskin vibes. <laughs> you spin gold, right? We, we are so incredibly powerful when it comes to our ability to create things, to have new ideas, to take action based on those ideas, to collaborate, to share your truth, regardless of the way the world is going right now. So incredibly capable. Like, oh God, it does. It makes me want to cry. It makes me want to cry how people don't see what they're capable of. Um, hmm. 
And um, yeah, like what I'm getting is that all these things that started out with the milk creamer, it would be like a really, just a really thinly painted um, stream of liquid, but it would get, it would materialize, right? It would become something physical, something more. And all of that started like in your heart and in your energy and in your mind. And we owe it to ourselves to be able to see that process through um, and not give up on the things that we're trying to create. Oh, and I like what, what I'm getting with that as well is that like, even if other people don't believe in what you're doing, I promise you, you'll, you will lead the way to show them how to do it. So don't worry if people think you're, you know, I don't know. Maybe they don't agree with your divorce or your choice to get a, a new job or whatever it is. But as I've said before, life is not for other people to understand you. It's so that you can understand yourself. And, you know, ideally those things aren't mutually exclusive. But um, back to this, what I'm seeing is like that dream that little bit that's being poured, it's it's materialized enough. So now we're sitting with the material expression of that wish, you know, she has a pentacle, she's able or ready to start, not start, but continue making choices in the same vein of the wish that involve a little bit more of like a show up and do the work, as my grandfather's always said to me. And I told you, I went through a very big phase of my life where I was at odds with him. Not not really, but all the adults who care about me and love me in my life were very, very frustrated with me because they saw my job as being very easy and I found a way to make it very, very hard. And all I had to do was show up and do the work, but my I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't want to. I didn't want to do that work. I I couldn't get myself to do it. The pressure of disappointing the people who look out for me and care for me was so great. But even then, I couldn't force myself into doing it because it wasn't where my, you know, where my energy lay because I had a lot of, um, I mean, we know this now on the other side of it, a lot of really crazy lessons to go through and karma to clear. I'm never going to say like I had to, had to do that, but that's the way my life went for the purpose of my higher learning and coming out um, where I am now, I'm not perfectly healed, but doing very well, doing better and better every day. And um, my point is, there's this noble yet humble, it's kind of an interesting pairing, noble and humble. There's a noble and humble sense of <clears throat> responsibility that we can bring to the things that <clears throat> I keep saying, new life, new chapter, whatever. Maybe your whole tower was all releasing. I mean, they, they kind of have to go in tandem. Maybe there was a bunch of toxic people and toxic things and they're all gone and it all cleared out. Or maybe you, you thought that was the best thing ever and the world came and crumbled it all down and, and you were really upset, but now you see that it was for your highest good and you kind of have all this time on your hands. There is newness coming in and maybe you don't know what that is yet, but it's like each and every day you will figure that out. Each and every day is a physical expression of you walking in line or out of line with intent and idea. I think I'm going like way um, too hard on this idea, but I keep running around in circles. And again, I don't know. Thanks for your patience with me. When I'm feeling overwhelmed emotionally, I have a harder time channeling out collective messages, but I think this is going okay. So just thanks for your patience. <clears throat> One of the issues of not having, I do intend to have a couple friends like share in this space with me. I do have a friend who has um, some <laughs> experience taking feminist literature cult culture classes and I'd like to use her academically minded ways around feminism today to help me go into the Barbie thing and what we think it's doing to society. She's who I went to see the movie with. Um, you know, I'd like to have her up here. But anyway, the issue with me being alone is that there's nobody around to be like, we get it. You can move on. What you're saying isn't that complicated. You've expressed it. <laughs> but Okay, all right, so this is our current energy, what I've discussed. 
we've got the Seven of Wands, the Star, the Page of Pentacles, and the Two of Pentacles cards here. What is the energy to embrace at this time? That came right out. Knight of Swords, go forward with speed. You know more. Okay, all right, all right. So we've been in this calculated thing that's somewhat obligatory, right? With, with that, and then this kind of two has this pondersome quality, static, stasis. It's kind of in the head. And then this, which is like, uh, I'm going to keep doing things, keep pushing through, blah, blah, blah. And now we've got this. Okay, so this is our first swords card out, and it's definitely telling us that whatever you think you have to I'm getting I'm getting like gut instinct if you have choices and decisions throughout the day where you're being faced if they're if they're glorious or if they're just really stupid and tedious I don't care it can be anywhere in between right don't overthink it you have what you need in terms of your intuition being aligned with the truth you, you can trust your intuition at this time to go with that gut instinct and be like, I'm seeing somebody uh, picking out, picking out um, wedding planning. Okay, so the person comes around and says, this one or this one, just doop, this one or this one, doop, pick, pick, pick. So it's, it's, a, it's a clarity with the sword, a clarity of thought, a clarity of intuition, and therefore a clarity of choice, and therefore clarity of path. So it all adds up. What else with the Knight of Swords is our energy to embrace? The well. I'd like even more clarification on that. <clears throat> okay. All right. 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 Okay. So with the well, what I'm getting is like we've spent a fair amount of time conceivably thinking about what we're capable of and what we can do especially you know cre creatively but also as as one person in the world like what what makes me different from other people what do I have to offer that kind of has to do with the wellspring of creation again and being able to access the potential within that and so I'm seeing this kind of like sharp ability to make decisions and move forward, um, being a result of having that connection, but it's saying don't forget, you know, that they go in tandem. And so even if there is a slight hesitation, instead of pick one, this one or this one, all you have to do, and I'm seeing like, doo -doo, like this little touch down into the well, touch down to the cool slate underneath, you know, the, the sands and the surface and the water skimmers, you just touch down into that intuition and you will know. You will maybe not know right away, but you will know. No, I have something that I would like to show and share, but I'm not finding it. My kyanite. Where's all my kyanite? Where's my kyanite? I have a box of kyanite, but I might have taken it somewhere. Kyanite? Clear crystal quartz. There is a form of, kind of looks like mica. It's a stone called kyanite, and it's known as the answer stone. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, hopefully you do. And when you go to ask yourself something, you know, or somebody asks you something and you're like, eh, I'm kind of on the fence about that. If you kind of check in with your heart and you're like, I mean, I'm getting, like, I'm feeling this pull. Kyanite basically just helps to crisp crisp up that intuitive nudge. And I use it in a bunch of different ways. I thought I had a good stock of it. When I used to do hands-on energy healing sessions up here in my studio, I had all sorts of um, things to prescribe, basically. You know, send you away with some crystals and some oils and stuff after I had a session with my, with my client. And maybe I'll get back to that one day. But anyway, um, I don't have any of it to share, which is also really bizarre because I remember having some right here. It's blue. It's blue. And if you've ever been, you know, hiking where you get that reflective mica on those boulders kind of at the summits of um, 
mountains. Mica appears in other rock formations as well, but I digress. Okay, so Kyanite, K-Y-A-N-I-T-E. You can order some on the internet. Um, just vet the seller and make sure it's a that it resonates with you, I guess. Like if it looks shady, it is shady. It's it's not more complicated than that. And one might be like, well, what's so shady about a crystal dealer? I mean, you'd be you'd be shocked. Sometimes people sell you stones that are dyed, like with 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 dye to look like other stones. You know, they're not remotely authentic. But anyway, Kyanite can help you listen to your intuition. It also helps me find things. I have a piece of Kyanite downstairs on my shelf in my living room. And if I'm missing something, I will go hold it and I will ask, where is the thing? And I will have a much clearer understanding or nudge of where it is. Because I'm clairaudient, I tend to hear the answer. But sometimes I'm like, oh, this isn't working. Screw this Kyanite. And I put it back. But then I, I go right to the object. So again, you have to trust like your your human emotions are not necessarily on board for the timeline, that the wisdom of your soul has. And <clears throat> I forgot to say this at the beginning of the reading, but another thing that I'm getting with this new moon in Leo feeling like a full moon, it's almost like August is like triple whammy. First of August, full moon, this moon, but end of August, full moon, it's like choo choo choo. That's rare. Once in a blue moon, right? They call it a blue moon. The second one is going to be a blue moon. Because once in a blue moon, you have two full moons in a month. But but what I'm getting at is um, people are a lot more short-tempered than usual under this energy. Yourself included, myself included. So you need to be like gracious with yourself, gracious with others, stay safe, you know, on the roads. Um, uh no, don't don't take things as personal attack. A lot of it's projection right now with with just short tempered interactions. I've, I've witnessed it out in public earlier today. Um, I certainly have felt like stretched thin as far as my patience, but it's just a constant, you know, remembering um, around how to lovingly speak to yourself and therefore others. You don't want to be the reason why somebody's day is awful. No. You want to be a day brightener. Maybe you don't care about how you impact other people during the day, but we certainly have the potential to. So I'm just going to keep that in mind. Um, I asked for some clarification with, um, with the beautiful well and the Knight of Swords as energy to embrace. Okay, what I have gotten is the Ace of Pentacles and the Three of Pentacles, the world and the Nine of Swords. Okay, so what I'm getting with this, the world is our big closeout, right? She's our she's our ending and our new beginning. She also speaks to, like, the world is your oyster. I just love how um, Birth of Venus Botticelli this is. Also, I'm sorry, I'm just showing you my nails again because they look good with the cards. <laughs> it's the little things. Um, it's, it's the, the world card, you know, it can be depicted in a lot of different ways, but I love how, again... It's got this weightlessness about it, which I get off of the Page of Cups, which is not a card that has come out today, but I was talking about it last week. I was talking about it because it's almost like she's captured in this state where her hair is like hovering. It's this, it's this limitless potential moment, okay? <clears throat> but it also signifies completion. And in the energy to embrace coming out with the other things that we've had here, what I'm seeing is like, listen, go ahead and cry about the stuff that hasn't worked out. Uh, learn from your mistakes. Make resolutions at this time when you set intentions on a new moon. And I'm not saying like get out your dream journal. I mean, sure, do that if you have one. But it doesn't have to be that formal, as I said before. I, I simply don't have the time or the bandwidth or, you know, the emotional capacity because I'm very, very keyed into what I need to do in order to remain even keel and take care of myself. So I don't have, you know, I'm not going to stow away into my cozy place and write lists and lists of, of affirmations as I might have done on another new moon on another month. And I might do it again in the future. But for now, all it is is like, this is what I'm grateful for. This is what I'm continuing to work on. Quick, quick. But as you set intention, it can be a resolve to not do something again, you know, or not make anybody feel that way again, or not let anybody make you feel that way again. So 
I'm seeing this close out again. <laughs> How many times can I say it again? With these, with these kind of tower energies still at play, freeing ourselves from what hasn't worked out, seeing things for what they really are so that we can fully recognize this transformation for what it is. If you don't think that something was destined to leave your life, maybe you're going to leave a little spot open for it. And I talked in the past about walking the dead dog or giving CPR to the dead body. It's equally... Oh, for anybody who's seen the show How I Met Your Mother... This is like when, and if you haven't, I'll just describe it. Um, there's a highly codependent but inspirational couple whom I love, Marshall and Lily. And their characters, I mean, they're, they're inseparable. And when Marshall goes away, she, she uses a body pillow and like puts a tie on it and calls a marsh pillow. It's like that. It's like, it's like something trying to leave our life and we adopt this, you know, borderline personality psychosis situation of being like i'll leave the spot oh oh you want a divorce that's okay like i'll see you i'll see you in a little bit though like you're coming back right no 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 they're probably not coming back you know and L lily in the show yes he was coming back and it's a it's a coping mechanism but you know i'm making my point around the fact that you are just clogging up that beautiful new space in your life that you concede with new opportunities and ideas with the old stuff that doesn't want to never ask anybody or anything to stay in your in your life who doesn't want to be in it never it's just it's disrespectful to yourself and i know that it can hurt to accept certain things around that as in like maybe somebody doesn't want to be a part of your life that can be really 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 painful some could argue it's some of some of the most painful stuff that we go through in life. But if somebody doesn't want to be in your life, you have to let them leave your life. And if they come back, then then they come back, you know. But if they don't, and you never stop wanting them to, that's where your learning is. That's where your growth and your learning lies. But... <clears throat> What I'm getting as far as embracing this energy right now, just really see see all of see all of the endings for what they are. When it's talking about loose ends, you know, make sure that you have some ability to bring a conscious light to the stuff that you have changed. Because a lot of the things that we've been changing over the past few weeks, there's a fair amount of it that's conscious, but then there's a fair amount that's just changed as a byproduct of the conscious changes. So shine your light of attention, kind of cast it, scan through what you do on a daily basis, who you've been talking with more, who you've been talking with less, where you've been going, what you've been doing, how you've been feeling. Kind of scan yourself through all of that and be like, do I really, you know, am I, am I all wrapped up here? Do I, do I feel good about what I've let go of? And, and if not, you don't have to, you know. Sometimes things are painful and you're meant to feel that pain and you're meant to like either learn from it or feel it and then let it go and then that's it but there's an energy to embrace here around knowing that what's gone is gone and then dealing with that in the way that we know how to healthfully healthfully don't self-sabotage okay the other energy that we have for embrace is our beautiful three of pentacles again collaboration Putting ideas uh, to paper, as well as the new materials start with the Ace of Pentacles. So this is beautiful. We're embracing a fast-moving energy that creates action, makes decisions swiftly, that are based off of our true creative abilities, you know, our, our intuition. But it's all very real now, and I'm seeing these, these two again. Page of Pentacles and the Star. I'm also getting a sense that it's much safer. I love, love this energy. I love this. And I hope this is true for you, for anybody. It's much safer to talk to the people that we trust than it ever has been about our deepest dreams and desires. It's a safer time to do that for whatever reason. And I'm almost seeing it as like a, I mean, it, it's, it's enough 
it's enough out of our dream world into um, a place. And I don't, maybe this is going to take you, maybe this is a, a multi-million dollar business that's going to take five years to build, you know, but maybe you've, you've never seen it more clearly than it is now. So the star has kind of trickled into the page energy. And two, you see when I hold this from far away, this is almost like a faint outline, whereas this looks more physical. And maybe that's because the way I'm holding it, but it doesn't appear that way. This is just more saturated and defined. So I'm seeing the star. She's like the wish, the apparition. She's also more mythical in, in her nudity, right? And this is a fully clothed apprentice type, as the pages are often energetically, right? Younger or beginning. And so... I would never put some type of limitation on yourself around how long something will take to develop and manifest. It could happen in much, in a much shorter time frame than you think. But I would also, on the other side of that, don't be dissuade, dissuaded <laughs> by the fact that something might take time. And I'm sure everyone's heard this before, but the time's gonna pass anyway. The time's gonna pass anyway. And it's shrouded in victory and success. This beautiful thing that you have in your heart. All right. What should we release right now energetically through this transit, this new moon in Leo? What are we releasing? What do we need to release? What do we need to release? Okay. Hermit energy. No longer star in the in the lantern. Star, she's a real girl. She she Pinocchioed into the <laughs> right. Okay, and then with the embrace as well, it's a it's a new physical beginning that requires work out of us. And again, I talked about kind of like this daily participation in our own choices and our own movements. That should be a, a moving prayer. That should be a blessing to partake in. Not all of it, not every single step of building a business, like, I don't know, breaking ground and um, getting your first dollar bill. They're not all going to be beautiful um, memory making moments, but they're all equally important and you can enjoy your venture still. You know, you can take it, maybe, in fact, when, when things are harder to do in a new beginning. And I'm also thinking about parenting because I've been using this baby analogy, right? Just because the baby um, shits and throws up and, and, and spits on you doesn't mean that having a child isn't worth it. So, uh, where was I going with that? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Wait a second. Excuse me. Okay, I need to back up. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that as we are, we need to release the hermit energy. I just finished saying how it's a safe time to talk to the people in your life about what you're trying to create. Maybe they can even help you do it. Maybe they want something very similar. There's enough to go around for everybody. You know, these aren't things we have to hermit away about and, and protect resources. In fact, there's this beautiful reciprocity that's capable of being circulated with the energy right now where it's. Not so much like, oh, you want to do that and I want to do that? Let's go do it together. Potentially, but more so like, that's awesome. I can see you doing that. You're going you're gonna to do so great at that. And then maybe they say that back to you again, right? You don't, you don't offer that kind of lip service if you do not mean it. You don't do it to get anything in return. But just the circulation of ideas and support that is possible, it requires other people. It requires you going outside of the hermiting cave. Okay, what else did I get? This energy. So again, it doesn't mean, yes, we've got the energy of collaboration here, other people. This is to embrace, but what's not to embrace and to release is coming out of the cave, coming out of, out of the hermit energy. What's not to embrace is conflict, so release conflict. What I said at the very, very beginning of this reading is like, if you have to do stuff with people that you would rather not, you have to say things that you would rather not. I don't know. I don't know what that may be. I don't know why I said that. I just like say you're somebody who has to fire people or something. You'd rather not say that, you know, um, just encapsulate your energy with good intention. Um, 
and what whatever just so that your own energy is protected within any dynamic that still persists in this manner where there's too many people like talking over each other or I'm also seeing this is so random maybe it pertains to somebody a family trying to make um plans for Thanksgiving through like a whole a whole bunch of ways like sometimes it's an email chain sometimes it's a phone conversation or like a FaceTime where there's a few people in the background and they're all trying to like just at that point you just not because you don't care but you close your mouth and you sit back because this doesn't look fun so we're releasing any type of conflict or like if there are even if it's Okay, also, I'm getting a message around, like, sometimes we want to do things and we remain in convoluted dynamics or dynamics that are troubling because we deeply care about the results, even if it's inconvenient or a disservice to ourselves or almost disrespecting of ourselves. And what I mean by that is, like, you want something to get done right, so you stay involved in something because you care about the execution of said task. <sighs> Maybe identify where in your life you can let go of certain things like that. One of these guys is bound to figure it out. You don't have to get involved. So that's a very specific message that might not resonate with everybody, but here's what else we're releasing, okay? King of Swords and Wheel of Fortune. This is crazy. What I'm getting off of the Wheel, and For Wheel of Fortune is that we need to kind of get off our butts and stop saying, like, it'll happen when it's meant to happen. No, I mean, what are you going to do today? What are you going to do today? I'm seeing a synergy between this pentacle and this wheel of fortune. Wheel of fortune is holding, you know, time. Wheel of fortune is holding the, the fates, basically. That just turns and turns and turns. Stop thinking about what I said before, how long it's going to take until it pans out and manifests as more than a seed, more than a bloom. You know, the parents aren't like, gosh, I wish this baby was 18 already. And if they are... God forbid, send some help and get that baby out of there. Um, but, you know, you get my point. This is what we should be focused on. The pinnacle, the project, the idea, the steps that we can take each day, the clarity that we have within our hearts and our intuition to just keep saying yes or no or saying anything at all. You know, it's the playing field of your own life. So don't get too wrapped up in when things are going to happen or if certain things are meant to be, meant to be or not. You know, maybe you do need to do a little bit more well, well digging, ruminating over the things that resonate with you and that which doesn't in order to kind of focus in on the vision enough to be so kind of like impassioned by your own ideas, your own thoughts around things that this matters less and less. You know, when's it going to happen? Because that's not detachment in the way that brings in the manifestations of things. So, yeah, earlier I talked about, hang on. What's it? I was getting brought back to something that I said in, in the earlier reading, but now it's gone again. So whatever. Again, with um, energy to release, I'm actually going to get a clarifier for this King of Swords because I have an idea about it, but I want to make sure that I'm communicating properly. No, I'll, I'll say what I have to say first. So what I'm getting is that it's, it's about um, what I said earlier about short tempers right now. Um... So just make sure you don't be unnecessarily cutting with people around you. There's a way to be very gung-ho and direct and decisive. This energy, he's on horseback, right? He's wielding his sword, but that's because he's going into battle, the battle, the playing field of his own life. His decisions can be made very quickly with that sword's energy without being, you know, at somebody, like a personal offense or, you know, it's not about the recipient of the decision. It's about the decision being made quickly because it's in aligned with, it's in alignment with the pinnacle and the wish. And that has to do with you. So what I'm getting, and I will still get my clarifier card for it, but it's like, don't, you know, 
What's the clarifier for the King of Swords? The King of Wands. Yeah, I, I want top and bottom of the deck. That's pretty funny, isn't it? What's the clarifier for one king? The other king. So he's the cold and detached one. He's kind of the egotistical one, but they both get things done. This wands king, this swords king. Yeah, top and bottom of the deck to clarify my kings. Judge, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Look, the gang's on here. King of cups, king of wands, king of swords. Um, and judgment. Why are these in the release position? I I think it has to do with what I said earlier. I'm going to get another clarifier with judgment. An outcome, rest assured, is taking place based off of what we're doing now. That's why despite these short tempers, despite this emotional watery energy, which maybe that's just me, but I think it has to do with... Um, well, well, Neptune's doing something, the moon, Leo is not necessarily an, a super emotional sign, but I won't, I won't go into all that. Um, it's important to keep your, as much as you can today, I'm not, I'm not a big one into forcing anything, but force yourself to express gratitude for one thing, you know, or, or look forward to one thing, because that, that carries a lot of weight right now. That's a powerful thing to do. But with that, I said, don't, you know, force yourself. Don't don't force things into happening. So if this is all energy to release, I mean, the only guy we don't have out is the, is the King of Pentacles. Um, and I kind of see that as being meant to be because he's the ultimate stability. These guys have other things going on. He's the emotional king, like, hey, how you doing? He's got some daddy vibes. Look at that low cut shirt. This one's more monogamous, but he's still got kind of like this need this one's more traditional but but anyway the king of pentacles he's the one with the pentacles he's the one with the stability he's reliable he's very grounded he's not here all of our pentacles cards you know the collaboration the three of pentacles the ace of pentacles the page of pentacles the star the star being the one that mimicked the page of pentacles <sighs> Those things aren't necessarily going to be building the pentacles, building onto our, our stable foundation via, you know, force. It's the combination of direct and consistent decisions being made day in, day out. It's a commitment to our new path, a commitment to raising the baby, you know, uh, a commitment to starting the business or whatever it is. But there's no need to be... Um, too forceful because even at this stage in the game where we try to force uh it'll ew i don't know a hernia i'm not too familiar with the goings on of hernias i'm actually kind of embarrassed i don't even know what it is really but i think it's when i'm when you're trying to lift something heavy and like a muscle kind of pops out or something what what my guides showed me was somebody like popping a muscle like a I don't even know how to talk about it because I don't like it or understand it very much. But say you popped it back in, the little blip that came out. You put it back in. It popped out somewhere else. Yikes. That's not good. We don't want that. Whatever's going on with that visual that I'm having a hard time articulating, I sort of feel like if we try to act like we know more than we do, say things that we don't have the authority to say, uh... I don't know, profess feelings that we haven't allowed to grow yet. Like if we force anything right now, it'll pop out somewhere else. And that seems gross and uncomfortable. So let's avoid that, you know? I'm just, the judgment with the kings is around the fact that like integrity again, God sees everything. The eyes of the Gatsby billboard, that ocular doctor. It's not like be afraid. It's more so like, you know, do you make yourself proud? Do you make yourself proud with what you do? Sometimes our inclination is to be very domineering so that we can get results and be like, I'm in a new energy. I have a new goal. I'm a new person. 
watch me work. <laughs> and we go forth in, in ways that aren't true to us. You know, like I said before, there's a way to be really decisive and quick about what we want and how we're doing things that isn't at anybody. It's not shoved in anybody's face. It's not at the expense of anybody at all. And as we know from history, sometimes kings can do things at other people's expenses. So that's interesting. Give me one more clarifier for this, this situation here with like energy to release being all of the kings except for the king of pentacles. And if he comes out, I will just absolutely lose it. I'm kidding. Clarifier for energy to release with these kings in the judgment card. Something clear, please. Clarifier. <laughs> it's the nine of cups. Okay, so typically, I mean, this is emotional fulfillment. I'm, I'm sort of seeing that it's about, again, having gratitude, having gratitude each and every day for how far we've come, celebrating the small wins, but don't get too like, don't get too pompous. When things start going well, make sure to check yourself. Be very humble. Be very humble about the wins that you're going through. I'm, I, I will always tell people to celebrate their successes. Um, but sometimes, like say you were picked for something over, you were picked you instead of 14 other people. And that news was given to 15 people all at the same time. That's not when you have your dance party in front of the other people that didn't get picked. You can do it at home. Definitely do it. Definitely have your dance party, but maybe don't do it, you know, at them. <laughs> and I'm seeing this too as like, I asked for clarity on what we're releasing. He's kind of got the arms crossed pompous asshole thing going on, right? All the full cups and a satchel. Whoa, money bags high rolling just um yeah <clears throat> and i'm seeing um i'll draw it real quick because i put a piece of pad here a paper pad here so that i could do stuff like this when i have an idea like this I could have just as easily described this without drawing it out, but here we go. Okay, so big decision. And I, forgive me, it's a scale, okay? Wait a minute. <laughs> I drew it wrong. I drew it wrong, I'm so sorry. A scale only has one fulcrum. And then the things are on either side. That's so weird. I, I had like image dyslexia. So this would be just one. And this would be another one. But I drew I drew each one with having two bases. And now I'm like, there's a message in this and I need to decode it, but I, I'm gonna not not go off on that right now. Okay. So pretend I drew them properly and there's one fulcrum per scale. And you've got decisions, okay? <clears throat> My whole point in sharing this is that there are some decisions in life, big decisions, big decisions, okay? The big weights, you know, the two options for a big decision of this magnitude. You see this is the scale of magnitudes as well, like a fractal. This gets more minuscule, this gets grander. These, you can't even weigh them on these little scales because these are big, this big stuff. What I'm getting right now off of like the judgment energy, the kings, no matter how big, no matter how small, the universe sees all of that, you know? Judgment is going to be paid out on our actions. So it doesn't matter if it's a small action. It doesn't matter if it's a big action. It's asking us to walk with integrity right now. It doesn't matter who sees. It doesn't matter who knows. That's another reason why it's important to celebrate yourself and what you do have that's going well for you because... I don't know. Sometimes I think we wait around for other people to, to celebrate us or what we have going on. You don't need to do that. Around the time of my birthday, I celebrate for 
an entire week. The whole week belongs to my birthday. I'm, I'm okay with that. My ex-boyfriend was like, you don't get a whole week. You just get the day. I was like, okay, well, we have no future. I'm kidding. Not really. <clears throat> I put those cards back in and I'm going to shuffle once and then I'm going to get a uh, what we're not seeing right now. And then I'm going to conclude because I, I know this is, is very long. You know, th those who are meant to see it and those who can stick through kind of like my... If I haven't done a reading in a few days in particular, I have like a little bit of a channel -y amnesia where I have to, I don't know, talk for about 45 minutes before I fall into my groove. Blech. Did I finish saying that thought? I think so. I think so. What are we not seeing at this time? What are we not seeing in the energy? What is the energy that we're not seeing? What are we not seeing in our own lives? It's the Four of Cups. Clarity on that, please. What are we not seeing? Hidden energy. Hidden energy. What do we have? Four of, four of Pentacles, Four of Cups, Four of Pentacles, no, Four of Swords, <laughs> four, four, four might be a number that you've been seeing recently, I certainly have been seeing four, four, four quite a lot, in fact I saw it, ooh, and the Sun and the High Priestess, wow, okay. When I got home today, it was 4, 4, 4 p.m. Okay. Hidden energy. Um, well, first of all, what I'm getting off of this is like just the incredible amount of support energetically. I don't care who you are or where you are. You have support. Like you have support energetically from ancestors you could it could be several generations back you know a great 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 grandmother you've never even met you didn't even know they existed you know you have guides and angels and the universe whoever whoever you want to pray to and believe in you have them and they're there for you so we might not be seeing just how well supported um we are it's one of my greatest wishes that everybody kind of knows and feels that on this on this like deep level because nothing else in my life gives me the courage to be who I am and do the things that I do except for that feeling feeling like I'm supported you know um and it brings me back to psalm psalm 28 too where David was saying, you know, if I don't have, if I don't have you, God, then what do I have? And it doesn't have to be so literal as, as God, God, it can be like faith, you know, but I, I'm, I'm just, that's an intuitive read off of this, but that has to do with me seeing the high priestess and the sun, right? The universe wants you to succeed. And I, I'm also getting this idea. And I shared this a few videos ago, when you love yourself, when you love on yourself, when you take care of yourself, when you appreciate yourself, when you're grateful for who you are, when you can see the beauty in the being that you are, even if you have a, a horrible, horrible time, I, I don't know, going on right now, there's a silver lining to who you are. And if there's not, you can make one out of how you're conducting yourself through this time, whatever, whatever it may be. You're complimenting the work of God when you engage with the self-love of who you are, because you are of creation. You didn't decide any of this you just came about and and now you know you, you've done things based on the opportunity that you've been given to have this life but in the unseen energy just know your prayers are heard okay whoever you pray to they do hear you there is happiness for you 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 are worthy of happiness you're deserving of happiness you're deserving of the big happiness the happiness that you're you know the, the things that we won't let ourselves want for or go for um, 
That's all well supported. That's beautiful. The sun and the high priestess. What I'm getting off of this, what we don't see, well, number one, 444, there is a structure to the things that are happening right now. That's why it's important to release the Wheel of Fortune energy around like, when is something going to happen? Don't try to pull any like sneakies, anti anticipatory, like, well, I'll do this because then that. Don't do that right now. I'm not saying that it's a good time to do that. We need to be honest in, in action and word and do the things that are going to build to the other things. That has to do with not like pulling a pulling a king. We're in Page of Pentacles energy and that's okay. We're new parents. We're not claiming to have done this a billion times before. Um, so... Hmm. I'm, 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 I'm not really going to read them individually because it's unique that they all came out and because they're all fours. So what I'm getting is that even within kind of like this um, gritty, gritty energy, it's like a, it's like a sanded grout. It's like a, it's like a toothpaste that has um, little minty crystals in it. It's not a smooth cream. There's grit to it. Okay. The energy. It's a fine grit though. So even within this energy that's kind of like sludgy, we're moving through, you can't totally smear it without having some of it, you know, create a little scraper and abrasion. We're kind of moving through, we're scratching as we get all the little grits off and whatever. There is enough time to reflect as we go through the moment, which brings me back to what I was saying um, last week around time being relative. So like if you feel exceptionally pressured or unstable, no that you can ask for help with with the decision with the situation and then you need to believe that whatever gets dropped into your mind whatever your intuition is whatever your instinct is it'll come to you and you can trust you know that what you say and what you feel is valid and i mean even if Even if it doesn't get the response that you want, you have to trust that it was, you know, the right thing to say. I'm going to cut the deck just to get a little clarity on this 444 situation. Temperance. Yeah, patience, trusting in the universe. And... See, well, okay, so, okay. What I heard is see the underlying order. See the underlying order that's driving a lot of things right now, collectively, at a global scale, in your own life, in the lives of the people that you interact with on a regular basis. History repeats itself. In some ways, we're, we're just always in this continuum, right? Why, why would we rush if we're just dancing in infinity for all time? It's silly to rush. Hmm. And I'm also getting like, there is with this, with this gritty, with this kind of gritty new moon energy passing through, we might have the inclination to like speed up or do things differently, but there's enough with the four of cups being this, it's, it's almost bored. It's so meditative, right? Taking time out. It can also be, you know, not, not seeing things for, for how good they are. This can be holding on to things, but it also indicates stability and this being taking time out for rest and reflection. It may become heightened to us right now, how we stack up or compare to other people and what other people are doing. And that's an illusion. I mean, it, to experience that isn't an illusion, but however your ego conscious mind will likely transmit that information into your heart and in your energy is a distraction. That's the illusion part. One last thing to clarify this right now around temperance, this 444, high priestess in the sun, hidden energies. What to know, what to know about all that. Show me what we need to know. Oh, come on. I can't do with all this. <laughs> all right, all right. It's four cards. Well, what to do with all of it has to do with divine timing. 
and our material new beginning. This is the raising of the baby. This is the starting of the project. This is a life that doesn't have your toxic ex in it. I don't know what it is, but for clarification, we have the Wheel of Fortune. And, and I mean, you saw I shuffled. I know I haven't made a good name for myself as a talented shuffler, but I am getting better. And what else came was the, was the Six of Swords and the Seven of Wands. So this was also out before. We've got repeating energies here. And what it's saying is leave behind the, the stuff that doesn't serve you and fight the good fight. You know, stand up for what you do believe in and have to say. And again, not in king, king or like cutting energy. Just that's how it is. And I'm protected in thinking the way that I think. I'm protected in doing the things that I'm guided to do right now. Asking for and affirming that protection everywhere you go. And I mean spiritual protection. I mean spiritual protection. Um, and, I mean, this goes without saying, that spiritual protection, people will be like, well, that's good and well. You pray, but you could get mugged. You could get, you know, wh whatever it is. No, I mean, that that, that covers it. <laughs> if, you're, if you're spiritually protected, you will be physically protected from the types of threats that we see all the time on you know, horrible things in the world that we hear about and, and that, that happen. Um, but I'm just saying if I'm spiritually protected and somebody's being creepy on the street, scoping out a victim, they will not come to me. They will not. I promise you. Spiritual protection is protection in all of the realms. You're covered. You're covered. I mean, I'm not telling anybody not to have um you know mace or pepper spray or um self-defense abilities because the world is the world but you can have faith that you're seen and protected when you ask for spiritual protection and support um so with that that was a long message and i needed that so thanks for bearing with me and staying with me if you did i'd like to ring my chime just to clear the energy and recenter uh, so if you're listening with headphones, it might be loud, but just, um, here we go. And with this chime, you can release any of the, you can just kind of hear it, listen to it, but allow the clarity of the tone to clear out any of the stuff that might still be lingering for you that you want to release. Okay. Okay, I'm, I have one like residual message coming in at the end of this reading, and I don't know who needs to hear this, but stop procrastinating. <laughs> stop procrastinating. Two of Wands, you've looked enough. Stop procrastinating. I don't know who needs to hear that, and I don't know what it pertains to, but there is a difference between resting and taking care of yourself and honoring your needs and procrastinating. There's a big difference. You'll you'll know because if you're if you're procrastinating, you're not really resting anyway. You're not really invested in the show you're watching. You're not really asleep even though you said you were napping. Your your soul, your energy is still like, "Ugh, I need to do this." Like just if you have that itchy, um, and I always see phyllo dough, pastry dough, if you have that croissant flake itchiness on you right now, go ahead and do the thing. Go ahead and express yourself creatively and do something because there's procrastination here that we need to, we need to kick. It's not, it's not going to do us well at a new moon in Leo. So with that being said, um, just sending love out to everybody, hoping that people are feeling good and if not i hope that you start feeling better and i hope that something that i've said this evening is helpful to somebody okay <laughs>